Hey, how's it going? The Bingus Mew video on April 5th. I got a bunch of requests for Floppa as Persian on that video. And initially I just kind of wrote it off. Like, yeah, I'll do it, but it's just gonna be a run for the memes. It's not gonna be great. It looked pretty bad up front on paper. And over the next couple of weeks, I had a little bit of free time and I just like to play Pokemon. Unbelievable, I know. So I started to mess around with Persian on about April 20th, I wanna say my raw footage is from. So here we are months later and J Rose has already released his video. I'm I'm not going to comment on that. All I guess I really say is that it's very odd that he would release Cloyster and Persian and I would do the same thing. But at this point, he released his first quote unquote, even though I had the footage first. It's whatever. Now I look like a copycat. I guess I should say a copy Meowth. Am I right? But that's neither here nor there. All I want to say is that Persian was one of those runs. It's very surprising. And it was a very shocking run. I'm not going to say it was like a, it's not a top tier run, but I will say that up front, it was probably the most shocking run since Nidoking. So we're in for a treat. Initially, I was really excited to get this new unknown Pokemon out for you guys, but the excitement has waned a little bit now that what probably two or 300,000 people have seen it now, but it's whatever. I'm not salty about it at all. But with that said, I do Pokemon solo run content fairly often. So if that is of interest to you, consider subscribing to the channel to be kept up to date likes and comments go a long way to help out with the algorithm and you guys have been doing a great job so if you're someone who just never comments never interacts doesn't even think about it just take a second scroll down and just type in cult of floppa and it's just that easy everybody wins everybody's won and with that out of the way just sit back relax grab yourself a soda pop and let's see how the classy cat pokemon can compete against the titans of generation one Like always, I start out by making sure that our floppy lord has the best DVs possible, and to absolutely no one's surprise, the name for this run will be Floppa. And now we can begin our journey with our classy cat. As far as the rival goes, I'm picking Bulbasaur to give to him because there's not really a great choice in terms of challenge. I think Blastoise might have been the best choice, but at the time, I was thinking that since I get both Thunderbolt and Bubble Beam, picking the one starter that does resist both of those moves would be the best, but it really doesn't matter that much. I immediately go to the optional rival fight first, and at first glance, Persian stats really aren't anything special. They're about as average as it gets except for one, and that's where this beefy speed stat comes into play. Being so fast and starting off with Screech means that you can easily get through this battle even though you're at level 5. We'll talk about Screech more in a minute, but in terms of this battle, it just goes a long way to make sure that Bite hits extremely hard despite the level disadvantage. I did three total runs with Persian, and let's just address the looming problem of Brock. My initial thoughts, and one of the main reasons I just really really underestimated this run and thought it was just going to be a meme run was that I thought I was going to have the typical problems on the rock solid Pokemon trainer but let's just look how this segment of the game goes after some refinement. I do one optional bug catcher for some easy experience and it's a really easy battle. I do one optional bug catcher for some easy experience. It goes easy. I skip the second one. I battle the mandatory one and then we can make our way past uh, to pewter finally. I do try Brock at level 8 quite a bit but it's just not successful so that means I do do have to waste a tiny bit of time taking on the light years junior trainer to level up one more time in my first two runs i pretty much did every trainer and on this attempt this is where i was just trying to cut corners and shave off time i was really trying to push persian to its limits level eight just turns out to be too low and if you were doing like a real life time run like a scott's thoughts you might want to be level 10 or 11 to make this more consistent but for me level nine is that sweet spot in terms of an end game time run so let's take a look at Brock. I do fail two attempts, and that's just because Persian's a little frail, and ultimately, if you get a little unlucky and the AI decides to go for a lot of damaging moves, or if Onyx wants to use Screech into some tackles, then it's just more or less over for you, and there's not really much you can do about it. The main takeaway from this run and what makes Persian able to do so well early is Screech. Only having Bite as your main source of damage isn't great at first glance, but when you take into account that it does get stab and you are able to lower these normally really bulky rock type Pokemon that resist it by two stages per use, then you just have something that can just end up slicing through them. Now there is one minor problem and that's the fact that Persian Speed and Screech aren't a good combination 
Since crits are tied to base speed, that means we're going to be critting a lot. And since crits ignore those stat changes like defense drops, that means there's about a 1 in 5 shot that we'll just be wasting those turns. I don't mean to go on too long, so let's just take a look at the successful attempt. The Geodude is fairly straightforward. Open up with a Screech, and if it uses a defense curl, then just use another one. As long as its defense is lowered at least 2 stages, I'll just start using Bite. But if it uses another defense curl, I'll use Screech again. Crits are kind of counterintuitive to the strategy, but they are still welcome and they do decent damage. The main thing here is that you don't want to take a ton of damage before you finally move past. On the Onyx, Persian just has a great starting moveset for it. You want to immediately set up Screeches and then you want to Growl during its bide turns. It's pretty much the perfect move for that. If Onyx decides it wants to use Screech into some tackles, you'll be in some trouble, but it's pretty smooth in this attempt. And that's the Brock segment done. Hopefully it wasn't too lengthy, but saving at 17 minutes is a really respectable time and I knew this run had some potential at this point. The next segment is very easy, but as far as Mount Moon goes, you might be tempted to pick up Water Gun, but after a few runs, I can confirm that it's a complete time loss in doing so. You are just better off going through this Zubat riddled section as fast as you can, and like most runs, the only real challenge here is finding a Paris without wasting too much time. I immediately tackle Rival number 2 when I get to Cerulean. The battle itself isn't that interesting and I zoom by it pretty easy. My original strategy that I really wanted to do was to take out Misty first to smooth out the route to Bills, because if you really just sit down and think about it, there are about 10 trainers on that route, and if you're doing Doing a minimum battle run, maybe doing a couple of extra battles. The entire game just has like 70 battles. This means that this part of the game contains about 14% of the entire run. And the TLDR is that Persian cannot take out Misty without levels, so I wouldn't even try it. But it's not too bad if you do this route. Bubble Beam would have given you extra speed for sure, but just like with Brock, Screech means that you can still make decent time overall, so I don't feel too awful about not finding a way to take down Misty early. I just think it's impossible. With that said, returning to her afterwards is still a little bit volatile. Look at me flounder on the very first attempt, I miss Screech a bunch, I then take entirely too much damage and that just kind of sets me up to get absolutely blasted by the Starmie. The second attempt does go better, I decide to Screech the Staryu twice and then one bite can take it out. On the Starmie, I Screech and honestly you just kind of got to pray that it doesn't use Bubble Beam or Crit. It doesn't and Bite is doing some really heavy damage and I'm able to take this fight without too much hassle. Bubble Beam is the real prize of this fight. Persian doesn't learn many useful moves at all, but this is one of them and we will pretty much be keeping it for the entire run. Moving on towards Vermilion, there's not much to say other than that it's a real shame that Persian can't learn Dig. I'll make a very bold claim early in this video and say that if Persian could learn Dig, I think that this run could potentially be a top 5, top 3 run. But let's not think about that too much. What could have been, what should have been, whatever. Let's move on. Aboard the SSN, it's time for Body Slam. This is a strict upgrade and will be Persian's best move for like 85% of the run. 85 base power with stab is pretty beefy. I don't need to tell you guys that. I do also get the rare candy guarded by the gentleman and then it's straight on to rival number three. And you might expect some one shots in this fight and you do, but not on the Pidgeot. It takes multiple moves and from there I switch to Bite. It's good enough to take out the next two Pokemon and Body Slam is very similar on the Ivysaur. It takes two moves and it's not that difficult of a fight. Keeping it rolling to Lieutenant Surge, this is an important fight but unfortunately if you wanted a sweaty battle this isn't it. Body Slam puts in work here and it just easily one shots everything. I'm sure that the Raichu would have taken multiple of them but a timely crit just gets us through this battle very quickly. And here we get Thunderbolt and that provides us with very good coverage and outside of one or two things our moveset is pretty much set for the vast majority of the game already. Rock Tunnel is a breeze with Bubble Beam and Thunderbolt so we can just skip ahead and outside of beating Brock at a lower level, skipping Water Gun or trying Misty first before Bills and failing, there's really not much variance in the three runs that I've done in the first part of the game. The first big change I did here and just like I learned from the Cloister video is that I'm going to be skipping the Celadon Pokemart for now, I only want to visit it once and I want that one time to be when I have as much money as possible. From there I actually decide to go to Erica first. Persian has fantastic speed so I figure it'd be pretty smooth, maybe kind of easy. This fight starts out great and I'm just cruising and normally if you beat the victory bell you have pretty much a 100% chance of making it through the fight. But the Vileplume just pops off here. 
It puts me to sleep, and while I do wake up, two body slams just isn't enough, and I eventually fall to some pedal dances. The second attempt is about the normal Erica attempt that you expect. You see Persian's ability to tank a razor leaf, and it doesn't do it very well. I'm able to progress to the end of the fight, but I just don't have the HP left or the bulk to survive the vile plume. It's another reset. Finally, on the third attempt, I start to see some of those high crit rate chances come into play, and what ends up happening here is Body Slam makes very short work of this fight and I wouldn't say that this one was consistent but three attempts isn't something that I would consider too lucky so I'm happy with it. Now it's time for the rocket hideout and I'll reiterate my strategy from the past video. In this section Pokemon Tower and the Safari Zone parts I'm going to be picking up all of the vitamins and nuggets available to me. There's roughly about 45,000 Poke Dollars worth of them in total in all of these areas and it's very important to squeeze out the most in these runs. I feel like in the script, I've been going on a little too much and I've been going over these little intro parts with a fine tooth comb for too long. And I've been saying that I wanna cut out the boring parts for basically what feels like a month now. So finally, anyone who feels the same way will be glad that both Giovanni number one and Rival number four are both incredibly easy and they're honestly not worth showing. I'm just gonna show their battles really sped up in the background so that there's a compromise for anybody that that wants to see the complete run and just for the sake of trimming this video down there they are if you wanted to see them you can slow down the video after those segments are done it's time to make our way down to fuchsia just like with cloister i'm skipping the max elixir but i'm also skipping the pp up because it's just not that useful on persian once i'm there it's not time for koga but instead time to finish up the HMs of the run in Safari Zone and finish up our little money run that we've been having going on. This gets us the flat path to return later and not lose any time, but the biggest optimization of this run overall was skipping Koga and saving him for the sixth total gem. Most Pokemon don't have to do this, but for whatever reason, Persian just really struggles to beat Koga, and this routing is what gave me the best overall result. Either way, I do finish up, I dig out to Celadon and I can finally make our way to the Pokemart. Since this is a fairly new strategy I've been using, I'll quickly just go over it real quick. The long and the short of it is visiting the same place twice is redundant and it wastes your time, but that's fairly obvious. If you just kind of hold off and spend a little bit of time picking up the, all those high money items I've been talking about, you can pick up like quadruple the vitamins than if you visited earlier to smooth out things and it overall just makes the run more consistent. In this instance, I need as many calciums as I can get for special. Persian has a pretty great run, but there's one specific late game fight that isn't great, and this is the best way that I could find to give myself the best shot without wasting too much in game time by leveling up. From there, I make my way towards Silphco, and the only extra thing I do is get the rare candy on the 10th floor before getting to the meat and potatoes of things. And let's get that rival music started, and let's just take a look into rival number 5. The Pidgeot is first and we do have Thunderbolt. Persian doesn't have the most imposing special stat so it's not a one shot and I end up taking a sand attack so that's always just annoying. I finish it off and I get the opportunity to learn Fury Attack and I decline. Maybe some of you are surprised. Maybe one of you out there thinks Fury Attack's a good move. You're wrong. Gyarados is next and Thunderbolt misses turn one due to the sand attack but that's fine. I take some damage but the more important information is that Gyarados can survive a times four super effective Thunderbolt and I guess the calciums haven't kicked in yet. I then go down to a critical hit hydro pump and this is immediately another example of Persian special lacking a little bit but let's not panic yet it's just one reset. The next attempt is much better. I get that sweet 20% chance to crit and we don't have to worry about sand attack. This means that on the Gyarados I don't miss and although I don't knock it out it only goes for a leer and I can finish it off right after. Up next is Growlithe and it's definitely a Pokemon I'll give it that. If you can say anything about Growlithe it's it's a Pokemon. Next up is Alakazam and one of the issues coming in here a little bit low is that even though Body Slam is very strong it just fails to one hit. I get fortunate once again and it triggers a retroactive super potion and once again we're cruising. Venusaur is last and Razor Leaf wouldn't be great here. I get through this one but the bad news in the short term is that it takes three whole Body Slams to get past this one. I take a Vine Whip and then it sets up Leech Seed but that's the end of the battle. It's kind of a weird Persian 
Quirk that this was one of the best places to go at the time, but like I said earlier, Koga just gave me a ton of trouble in my first two runs, and the last little note that I wrote myself to fix up for this final run was to go to Sylph first, and getting this done in two attempts makes me feel pretty confident that that was the right choice. Moving on, I'm going to skip past Giovanni number two. If you have any objections to that, leave a comment below and tell me that you are sad that the footage is going to be playing sped up in the background. From there, it's time to give Sabrina a shot. The idea is that physically frail Pokemon with a stabbed body slam at our disposal will make things easy and things start out great until we get to that Venomoth. It paralyzes me and from there Alakazam just crits after I skip my turn due to being fully paralyzed. Jumping in deeper into the second attempt and how the turntables on the Venomoth. I paralyze it this time and then it misses its poison powder and that's way better than the first attempt. This means that I can now outspeed the Alakazam and one body slam isn't going to do it once again but it does use recover to get most of its health back but then Persian comes in clutch with a body slam critical hit to get another badge out of the way. After that I do go and pick up Mimic because it's an absolute must on Persian. I'm not sure that it could even beat the game without it. I guess it could technically but you would need to have lottery type odds to do so. Now I can finally return to Koga with all these extra levels and I know some of you might be curious why I had to hold off on Koga and it was mainly just really inconsistent due to Body Slam not being at least a two shot on most of his Pokemon. The extra opportunities that he got always made things detrimental and it just made things very hard to overcome. This time Persian gets a little bit crit happy and that's great. I easily take out the coughing, I two shot the muck and then I two shot the next coughing. The wheezing always has that self destruct potential but here it just doesn't do it and even though Body Slam is a three shot it's not too bad since we held off and came back with more stats. The speed portion of the badge boost is not really really that important for Persian because it's so fast already and getting through this difficult fight through proper routing on the very first attempt after making some adjustments in my other runs felt really validating for me. Now it's time to clear our head with a nice brisk swim down to Cinnabar. Things are really easy this week but after the bare minimum it's time for another edition of Tombstoner brother. But sadly we didn't get to see Tombstoner Tom this week. Leave a comment so maybe he returns next week. Now it's time for Blaine and this fight is a one shot. Bubble Beam is obviously gonna shine here and make things much more manageable but it's not really a smooth fight. I could see things going wrong here and having some potential resets but things just go great for me on the very first try. There's honestly not any really great commentary to give for this fight other than fire just doesn't like water squirted on it and Persian is just slinging water everywhere. Getting the special badge boost is pretty huge for Persian although even with the calciums from earlier and the 12.5% boost Persian special still isn't anything special. You get it guys? And now we got one gem left and honestly with Bubble Beam in our possession this one is nearly skippable. I'm giving Giovanni the courtesy of showing it since he is the final badge but it's just a Bubble Beam fest once again but Doug Trio does get a body slam. I'm doing some actual pretty impressive damage here so you can see that the levels and the vitamins and the special badge boost are actually helping out a good bit but that's the badge portion down. I'm making really great time up to this point and now it's time to immediately tackle rival number six so let's see how that goes. Pidgeot is the lead and since we don't have a badge boosting move it's straight Thunderbolt. It uses agility which allows it to go first afterwards to get a wing attack off but I am able to finish it off. Rhyhorn is next. Bubble Beam is my commentary here. You don't need me to say anything else. Gary is up next and let's see what Thunderbolt does. The answer is that now we can actually do enough damage to one shot and this is why you need those precious calciums. I, I just love one shotting Gyarados. It's one of my guilty pleasures. I could look at it all day. Growlithe is next. You already know. Just get out of here. Let the adults finish talking. Alakazam is next and our level disadvantage means that Body Slam just isn't quite enough once again. It does take two of them and I take some pretty heavy damage in response for finally getting past it. I level up to 47 but look how puny Body Slam's damage is on Venusaur before it takes me out with a Razor Leaf. This attempt wasn't bad but there's no panic. There's no need to use any candies or anything yet because it looks easy easily doable. Hopping back into the next attempt into the Alakazam, things are almost exactly the same. I don't get a crit, but this time it goes for Psychic and we are pretty much in the same exact position as last time. 
Venusaur is a problem and Body Slam just isn't doing that much. It goes for a Vine Whip and I can survive. It then uses Poison Powder that misses and a third Body Slam finishes off the battle. This one felt like deja vu of an earlier fight, but I'll take it. Now this means we are down to the Elite Four and with proper routing and optimization, this run has been nothing short of fantastic. I'd like to save time and skip the Rare Candy here, but the fact of the matter and something that we'll see shortly is that Agatha is a problem and unless we want to destroy the run's time by leveling up a lot, you're going to need all the help that you can get. It's the main reason that I needed all those calciums earlier, and that was only just to give us a fighting chance of getting through it quick. Like usual, I do use all but one of my rare candies, and I learn Mimic. Persian does get Slash at level 51, and I'm not going to go into too much detail here. The increased crit rate means that it will crit 100% of the time. The 70 base power of Slash plus Stab gives us a 105 power move, and if you take into account the way that crit damage scales in generation 1, we also have a 1.92 times multiplier at level 57, and it's only going to go up as we level up. This means Slash has roughly a 200 base power, and that's just a nuke, and it's going to be massive in neutral situations, but let's go ahead and jump into Lorelei before I just have a nerd guys I'm talking about these numbers. Ugh. This takes us to the Ice Queen Lorelei at level 57, and first up is the Deweyest of Gongs. With Thunderbolt and Slash, I'm not too worried here. A single bolt does do over half health and after taking some minor damage back I can just finish it off no problem. Coyster is the second Pokemon and Thunderbolt does even more damage here But unfortunately, it's not a one-shot I take a tiny bit of chip damage and that takes us to about half health and then we progress on So bro is next and although you don't need mimic for this fight I just play it safe here and I take amnesia and that's gonna make sure that our bolts are hitting extra hard for the rest of the fight I take a single water gun. So we are getting slightly low before moving on. Jinx is next. It doesn't have great defense and we get to see Slash just slice its body in half. Last up we have Lapras and with the Amnesia boost it's more than enough to one shot it and that's the first fight already done. Lorelai is just incredibly easy so everyone say goodbye and we're not going to be seeing her for the rest of this video. And speaking of easy, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Bruno. Now this isn't the world record for completely smashing Bruno but it's pretty quick. The Hitmonchan can survive a slash so you probably shouldn't use slash just in case it uses counter but it really doesn't matter it's just an overall very easy fight like everyone pretty much expected and we can just swiftly move on and not talk about bruno anymore now we get to the big problem of the run persian just doesn't have a great agatha matchup but i've done everything i can that's humanly possible to make this as smooth as i can the first attempt is the worst case scenario i get confused and i just never recover i hurt myself about 23 times in a row and i just just slowly get taken out and this is about as frustrating as it gets but let's take a look at the second attempt and talk more about it what you want to do is take hypnosis not shade is a viable option but the damage just isn't that great and I think it's much more comfortable to have the idea that you just put them to sleep and then just use your strongest special move and that's just the easiest scenario I get great luck on the second attempt I put the Gengar to sleep and you can see that even at level 58 with a perfect special DV and all of those extra calciums and stat experience that Thunderbolt is still a four shot but like I said this is easily the worst fight in the entire game but once you get past that it lets up a little bit go bat is nothing and you have answers to quickly move past it Haunter has the same exact pitfalls as Gengar but it's a little bit more weak defensively I put it to sleep but it does wake up and after that I don't bother even trying to put it back to sleep Thunderbolt here is an overall three shot and I do get a crit here but it doesn't really matter it still took three hits either way Arbok is next it's another non issue you. Slash surprisingly fails to one hit it, but it does get it low enough to trigger a retroactive potion and we're just moving on through. And since we are at the final Gengar at full health, and it has a history of just wasting its turns, this battle is all but wrapped up. I play it safe and I do utilize Hypnosis and this higher level Gengar can take about 42 Thunderbolts before it goes down, but if you have enough patience, you can get through this fight fairly quick. Although I get past this one on the second attempt, I just can't stress enough how bad this battle can be. And on my first two runs, it was a nightmare at times, and this was the main reason I optimized and prioritized getting the maximum amount of Calciums earlier. But after this fight, I do use use my last rare candy for Lance to reset my experience. Moving on to Lance, we get the cathartic experience of one-shotting a Gyarados once again and I'm 100% all about that life. I then get very unlucky on the Dragonair. I feel like I need agility to boost
boost my stats just a little bit to ensure that I outspeed Aerodactyl and can hit hard enough. I get very ambitious with my setup and I end up taking some very heavy hyper beam damage and as a result the Dragonair is just able to solo me which is honestly a little bit embarrassing but if you guys are alright with it I'm willing just to act like this never happened. No one mentioned this in the comments. It is annoying that I have to go through Agatha again but the reward of one shotting Gyarados once again is worth it in my opinion. The second time I just throw caution to the wind. I'm already fast so I just I just take hyper beam this time and from there I go for some revenge. I don't take a lot of damage and the stabbed hyper beam actually crits for good measure and then the next Dragonair comes in. I miss hyper beam, it misses slam and then I take it out on the next turn with a second beam. Aerodactyl is what I wanted some boost for and Thunderbolt just ends up being out of range for a one hit which is why I wanted those agility boost. That does trigger a hyper potion from Lance and the second bolt gives me pretty much the same result. I tank a bite and eventually I do finish it off. Dragonite is last. I go for a hyper beam for heavy damage but it also does the same. I go all the way down deep into the red health. I'm barely hanging on. We both recharge but Floppa strikes once again with a slash and I take the battle. Now the only thing standing in our way is the champion fight and you might think that this one might be easy but I do fail twice here and let's just quickly go over the failures real quick. Chip damage into an eventual razor leaf ends my first attempt and on the second attempt I get very unlucky on a range on the final level 61 Gyarados. I don't take it out and then it takes me out with a hyper beam. Remember that Persian doesn't have that great of stats outside of speed and it doesn't really hit particularly hard nor does it have much bulk so let's just look at the third attempt in more detail. Pidgeot is first here and I mimic sky attack. Looking back I don't think that this is actually the best use for mimic or even if you should really waste turns on mimic at all. I get hit for heavy sky attack damage before I use a couple of thunderbolts to take it out. Alakazam is second and slash is enough to take out about three Alakazams at once so we quickly move on and then Rhydon comes in. Guys it's trying its best and that's really all you can ask from it. Gyarados is a range and I get it here. It's a consistent one shot except for the one failure that I showed earlier. Nothing to see here. Next up is Arcanine and this one was just an annoying Pokemon for the run. It just survives and just keeps chipping me down or it gets a lucky crit or something like that. It can take up to three bubble beams to take it out and then when it gets a full restore it just draws the fight out even further but I didn't really take that much damage on this attempt and that's always a positive. Finally we are staring down the Venusaur once again. I charge up a sky attack and Floppa is glowing. Venusaur then soaks in some sunlight for a solar beam and at this point it's a wild west showdown. Sky attack does heavy damage but it's just not enough and now I have to tank a solar beam while already missing half my health. Floppa in a miraculous fashion hangs on with just 12 HP and that's all it needed to squeak this one out and cap off the run and that's it. Persian has done it. Honestly mimic on the final champion battle for sky attack was probably a mistake but I reset so many times I, and I tried this run multiple times I didn't want to redo it another time. Overall I feel like I shaved off a ton of time but I will admit that maybe another run maybe another second run could save another minute or so but I think three runs is all that Persian is going to get. Now with that said let's take a look at the stats. Persian finishes with a level of 62 and finishes with honestly a really impressive time of 2 hours and 49 minutes. That means if you put it on the tier list it would come in at number 8 and I don't know how this is going to sound but honestly it kind of makes me a little sad for some of my older runs that I did last year. Not that I don't think Persian deserves it or that I don't think it wasn't a great run because it was. I just think some of those runs that I did a long time ago could be a lot better specifically the star me. But this video is not about that. I do want to go back and redo some of those older runs, but that's neither here nor there. The main thing is that Persian was a very surprising run, and I had been sitting on this footage ready to shock the world since April. My overall excitement was lowered a ton when J Rose actually released his own Persian video, but here we are. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm a copycat now. I had a lot of fun with this one, and I'm joking when I said that last sentence. This started off as kind of like a meme request from a few people when the Mew video came out on April 5th and I expected it to be awful but I would say that this is probably the most unexpected run since Nidoking and I really don't have much more for you guys I need to get back to some egg move videos or some more runs where I put a different gen Pokemon into red and blue but believe it or not I still have requests that I need to get to more than likely I'm gonna release another schedule when I get it all figured out but if
if you've made it this far, you're a real one, and I really do appreciate you a lot. The ones of you that make it this far, comment, interact, you really just help the channel grow, and you're just as much of an MVP for the channel as I am, and I sincerely mean that. So have a great rest of your week, and I'll be catching you guys on the next video. Bye!